This is a medium difficulty GRE practice question. It's a quant problem solving question from set theory. The core concept is set theory, but this question also includes a healthy dose of two other chapters. One is the arithmetic progression and a little bit of number properties thrown in. Let's get started. Set A comprises all three digit numbers that are multiples of six. That part is very easy. Set B comprises all three digit numbers that are multiples of four. If it had ended here, it would have actually been an easy question. But it goes on to say, what does set B comprise? All three digit numbers that are multiples of four, but are not multiples of eight. That twist makes this question an interesting one. What we need to find out is how many elements does A union and B comprise? Essentially, the question is asking us to find out what is N of A union and B. One of the formula to compute, formulas to compute N of A union and B is equal to N of A plus N of B minus N of A intersection B. So essentially, we're going to break solving this question into three steps. First, compute N of A based on the information given here. That's very straightforward. Compute N of B that involves a little bit of adding some more elements more than just a straightforward answer. We need to work on that. Lastly, let's find out if there are elements common to both. If there are elements common to both the set, then that would have got counted once with n of a, once with n of b. We need to subtract that double count. So we're going to eliminate it as n of a intersection b subtracted from these two values. So let's set about the first one by starting with identifying the key elements in set a. What's the first element of set a? All elements in set a are multiples of six. So any element in set A is going to be 14 multiple of 6, 24th multiple of 6, whatever it is going to be some multiple of 6. The first element in set A is 102. It's a three digit number. 100 is the smallest three digit number, not divisible by 6. 101 is not divisible by 6. 102 is divisible by 6. So this is the first term of set A. Did you notice I've written it as what -th multiple of 6? We'll see why I'm writing this because it's going to be very useful in computing N of A, the number of elements in set A. The second term is 108, the next multiple of 6, that's the 18th multiple of 6. Quickly run through it, the smallest 4 digit number is a 1000. Obviously this is not divisible by 6, that's something that we know. The number preceding that 999 is not, you need to have an even number to be divisible by 6, 998 is not, 996 is divisible by 6. Last element in this set is 996. What -th multiple of 6 is it? It's a 166 multiple of 6. So elements in set A are basically these, 102, 108, 114, all multiples of 6, starting from 102 all the way up to 996. Let's compute the number of elements in set A. There are a couple of ways of going about it. I'll walk you through one here and we'll also walk you through a second method in the next slide. Here, this first term is basically the 17th multiple of 6. That's the first term. The last term is the 166th multiple of 6. Let's say if I took all elements up to 996, multiples of 6, let's say 6, 12, all the way up to 996, how many numbers would we have counted? We would have counted 166 numbers. Are we starting from 6? No, we are actually starting from 102. That's our starting point. So what all multiples of 6 we have not counted? 6, 12, 18, all the way up to 96 we have not counted. So the first multiple of 6 up to the 16th multiple of 6 has not been counted, right? So 6, to 96, which is the first multiple of 6, this is the 16th multiple of 6, this has not been included. So how many out of the 166 have we not included? We have not included 16 numbers out of the 166. Where did this 166 come from? If we counted all multiple of multiples of 6 from 6 to 996, we would have had 166 multiples of 6. In that, 16 are not counted. So how many are we counting? We are counting 150 multiples of 6 starting from 102 to 996. So n of a is equal to 150. This is one way of going about it. This is another way. If you do not want to go through any of these things, just plug it into an arithmetic progression formula. Look at it. All these terms, the difference between them is a 6, which means that these terms are in an AP. Go to the arithmetic progression formula. The AP that we have, last term is 996, first term is 102, the common difference is 6. A n is equal to A1 plus n minus 1 into d. In our case, this is a 996, this is a 102, and this is a 6. Solve this equation. We have one equation, one variable. The value of n works out to 150. The so number of terms in set A is equal to 150. So step one, computing n of A is done. So you could either choose a method that I used as finding out what all multiples of 6 are there up to the last term, starting from the first multiple of 6, and then finding out what multiples of 6 have not been included in that set. The difference between the two will tell you what is included. Or go with the AP formula. Let's move on to step two. 
this is more interesting trying to find out the key elements of set b the smallest three digit number is 100 is it divisible by 4 yes it is is it divisible by 8 no we want elements in set b to be three digit numbers that are multiples of 4 but not multiples of 8 so this basically ticks both the boxes let's go to the next multiple of 4 that is equal to 104 104 is divisible it's the 13th multiple of 8 so it does not tick this box it should not be a multiple of 8 whereas 104 is a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 8 so it basically does not pass the muster look at it let me just write down few multiples forget the three digit i'm going to start with a 4 4 8 12 16 this is good enough is this divisible by 4 yes divisible by 4 yes divisible by 4 yes divisible by 4 yes divisible by 8 no divisible by 8 yes divisible by 8 no divisible by 8 yes Look at it, alternate multiples of 4 are divisible by 4 but not by 8. We need to pick such numbers. So essentially what's the difference between these two numbers? This is going to be an 8. Let's go to the next one. 20 is it divisible by 4? Yes. Is it divisible by 8? No. So again what's the difference between these two numbers? This is going to be an 8. So the next term of this set is therefore going to be equal to 108. I am writing it, notice it, as a multiple of 4. So if you want to adopt the first method of finding out how many are there, you can basically check out what -th multiple of 4 to what -th multiple of 4. Compute the number of multiples of 4 and ensure that we are not counting every multiple, we are counting every other multiple. Divide that number by 2. So that's one way of going about it. I am not going to choose that because I am going to use the AP formula because that's quite straightforward for a question of this kind where we are not working with all multiples of the number. So second term is this. What's going to be the last term? 1000 is the smallest 4 digit number. Is it divisible by 4? Yes, it's divisible by 4. Is it divisible by 8? It is divisible by 8 as well. So this is not going to pass the muster. So the preceding multiple of 4, anyway we wouldn't have counted it because it's a 4 digit number. The preceding multiple of 4, 996 would have been divisible by 4 but not divisible by 8. So last term of the sequence is 996. So what all elements are there in set B? Starting with 100, moving on to 108, 116, the last number is 996. So we have to find out the number of elements in set B. Straightforward, go with the AP formula. AN is equal to A1 plus N minus 1 into D. I am reiterating formula in every video so that just in case you forget. After seeing so many videos, you should probably remember it without batting an eyelid. AN in this case is equal to 996. A1 is equal to 100. Very friendly number. N minus 1 in the common difference in this case is actually an 8. Though we are talking about only multiples of 4. 8, 996 minus 100 is an 896. That's equal to 8 times N minus 1. So divided by an 8 will get the value of N minus 1. 800 by 8 is 100, 96 by 8 is a 12. So n minus 1 is equal to 112, n is equal to 113. So number of elements in set B, n of B, we have found that n of B is this value of n, which is equal to 113. Quickly do this bit in a printed form. I'm going to compute the number of terms in set B. It's in an AP, the first term is equal to 100, last term is 996, the common difference we realized is an 8. Plug into this formula, get the value of n to be equal to 113. Number of elements in set B is 113. So step two done. Third step left is finding out elements common to both the sets. Finding the elements common to both the sets entails two things. We know that first set is an AP. The second set A is an AP, set B is an AP. Common difference here is equal to six. Common difference here is equal to eight. So we'll find out the terms that are common to this. In which sequence is it going to be? First thing, A intersection B, elements common to both these sets, if they exist, that will also be in an AP. What is going to be the common difference of that AP? The common difference of that AP is going to be the LCM of the common differences of these two APs, which is the LCM of 6 and 8, which is equal to 24. So if we have terms common to both these elements, then that will also be in an AP, and the common difference of such an AP is going to be 24. Let's see if there is any such term. Let's list down the first few terms of set A and set B. 102, 108, 100, 108. So we found a term common to both. So first term common to both of these is 108. The last term, incidentally, if you remember, had been a 996. So we know that the first term is 108, last term is 996. And I also mentioned that these are all in an AP. So let's find out the number of terms. First term is 108, last term is 996. They written down the terms of this, the common difference being 24. So all that is left is to find out the number of terms using the AP formula. 996 is equal to 108 plus n minus 1 times 24. 108 subtracted from 996 is 888 divided by 24. 888 divided by 24 is the value of n minus 1. 
this is a 37 so n is equal to 38 number of terms common to both these sets is equal to a 38 you need to find out n of a and b we have all these values n of a and b is what we need to compute n of a is equal to 150 n of b we found out in the last slide that is equal to 113 minus 38 which is n of a intersection b 150 minus 38 is a 112 plus 113 which is equal to 225 so number of terms in a union b is equal to 225 choice b is the correct answer to this question before you leave i want you to do two things one sign up as a trial user for visaco's online gre course at online.visaco.com takes all of three minutes and two steps to get started and lastly, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash visacogre. We keep adding newer questions, give you tips, tricks on how to crack the GRE.